The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD, available from SDC Publications. In the following video, a title block and border are shown surrounding the views of the object. However, if you created this drawing using the directions provided in Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD 2017 or a later edition, you are instructed to draw the views inside the magenta rectangle and the border and title block are not visible. So please ignore the border and title block when following the steps shown in the video. Later, when it's time to complete the title block, click on the Layout 1 tab located in the lower left corner of the graphics window and the title block and border will become visible in paper space. It is at that point that the text in the title block can be edited simply by double clicking on it. In this video I'm going to show you how to add dimensions to the bracket project which is located in Chapter 5 of the book Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD 2014. And uh, I've already created a, a uh, ASMEY 14.5 dimension style and if you haven't done that you may want to go through the steps in Chapter 5 or uh, watch the video named Creating an ASMEY 14.5 Dimension Style in AutoCAD. So since I've already created my dimension style I can get right into the dimensioning. I'm going to come down here and click on my Dimension Style Manager uh, icon and I want to make sure that my ASME, what I'm calling the Small Radii Dimension Style, is set current. Then I'm going to close that and the next thing I want to do is check what layer I have set current. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select on my text dash dimension or dimension layer and you may have different layer names in yours but uh, I want to put these dimensions on the dimension layer. So you can see I have my front view and I have the designer sketch and so I'm going to look at the dimensions that I need to put on this this view over here and what I want to do is make sure that the dimensions that I choose to place on this view will be in the profiles of the features uh, that I want to dimension. And I've already counted the dimensions on, on this sketch including the material and I think I came up with about 15 dimensions so I really don't have many dimensions to place on here. Some of them are going to be better on this view, some will be better on the right side view and some may be better on the top view. And uh, so what I want to focus on are the, are the dimensions that I think will do best on this view because, as I said, the feature shows in the profile view. So, for example, this angled line here or anything associated with this angled line, I should probably try to dimension in this view. The centers of these circles or these holes here, I'll probably dimension in this view. Uh, I can't dimension these holes because they're hidden and that would be breaking one of the ASME dimension rules. Uh, this uh, ramp that runs right up here represented by this inclined plane will be in a profile view on the right side view so I'll, I'll put the, any dimensions I need for that would, I would show over there. So let's get started by placing a, uh, a linear dimension. The first linear dimension I'm going to place is the one that says 1.20 right here. So I'm going to come over to my linear dimension tool. I'm going to pick right here and I can see that that begins at this corner and comes over to this corner so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to snap to this corner I'm going to snap to this corner I'm going to move my mouse straight up I'm going to zoom in here a little bit or scroll in and I'm going to move so that move my mouse so that the 1.20 is between my arrowheads. Now the key here is I want to place that dimension at least 0.4 inches away from my object so I'm just going to go ahead and pick it and place it right there and let me check that by using the offset command. I'm going to pick on offset and it says specify an offset distance. I'm going to type 0.4 and press enter. I'm going to pick this line and then just pick anywhere above it press escape. So you can see that I'm farther away from my object than 0.4. If I wanted to be exactly at 0.4 I would bring this down here and snap to the end point of that line that I just offset and then I would delete that line out. Alright, so that would be my first dimension that I'm going to put in here. I'm going to do another linear dimension and this time I'm going to go from this corner to this corner 
and uh, place the point 0.6. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to just go ahead and place this about right here. And if I really want to line these up, all I need to do is pick on that dimension and you'll see that grip that's showing up right here on that arrowhead. I'm going to pick with my left click button of the mouse and drag it down and snap to the end point of that arrow and that will line those dimensions up exactly if I do that. All right. Now, the next dimension that that I see over here in my sketch is this 0.25 dimension. Another dimension I'll probably put on this view is the 1.95. I'll put the 1.25 to the center of of those holes and then I need my two times diameter 0.625 and uh, then I'll see if there's anything else I want to put on here. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to go to linear dimension again. And this time I'm going to snap at this endpoint. I'm going to snap at this endpoint. I'm going to move straight out in this direction, uh, about the same distance out that my other as my first dimensions, and just pick. And you can see that now I've got the point 25 on there. Now what I think is a good idea is to take a uh, like a yellow highlighter and highlight that dimension highlight this dimension highlight each dimension as you place it on the view that way you know you you will get all your dimensions placed on the view all right the next dimension I'm going to place in here is the dimension from this corner here to this point right here which is 2.70 so I'm going to pick on linear I'm going to pick this corner I'm going to pick this corner move straight up and uh, come about to right here and pick with the uh, left button of my mouse. Now the distance between dimensions according to ASME rules needs to be at least 0.25. It can be more than that. Uh, what I think is important is that you go at least 0.25 and then whatever you use as your spacing you should be consistent uh, with any other spacings that you have. All right. The next dimension I'm going to place on here, I'm going to do another linear this time because this side's getting sort of busy I'm going to pick at this corner and I'm going to dimension to the center of my circle and when I pick on that instead of picking the center I'm going to actually pick at the quadrant of that circle I'm going to move my mouse over so that the 195 is in between and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put it in line with that first row of dimensions now I can come over here and acquire that endpoint and then move back across and follow that dashed line and pick and then I know they they really are aligned all this entire row of dimensions is lined. Now the reason why I selected the uh, quadrant instead of the midpoint or the center point of that circle is if I had selected the center point which I'll do right now what will happen is I lose the gap around my center mark and I want to have those those breaks around my center mark so I'm going to pick on that dimension again grab that grip and drag it back up to the quadrant press escape alright the next dimension I need is this 1.25 and that comes from this corner to the center of that hole so I'm going to pick on linear I'm going to snap at this corner, zoom out a little bit. I'm going to come in here, pick on the quadrant, move my mouse over, uh, come out about 0.4, and pick. Now, you'll notice that everything I've dimensioned has followed exactly what my designer sketch uh, has given me. So I'm, I'm trying to use the same datums and that sort of thing. Now you could say, well, that 195 is not the same datum, but this part is symmetrical, so the 195 is going to be the same on the other side. There's some other things I could do that are a little more sophisticated that would really uh, make that clear. One would be to draw a center line down through the middle of this part and then add the symbols for symmetry, but you may not have studied that yet, so I'm not going to get into that right now. All right, so what I need next is this 2 times diameter 0 0.625. So I'm going to zoom right in here. I'm going to go over to my dimension tool for diameter. I'm going to pick on that. I'm going to select the circle. And I'm going to move out in this direction. And I'm going to place that dimension right in here. I don't want to bring it out here and run it through my other dimensions. I've got enough room that I can put it right in there. So I'm just going to pick and locate that and press Escape. Now, the way I'm going to edit this is I'm going to pick on it and right click my mouse and go to precision and go down to three decimal places and that changes that to 0.625 so all I did was pick 
right click, went to precision, selected three decimal places. Now the other thing I want to say or do to this is because there are two holes, I want to say two times in front of this. So I'm just going to double click on that. Didn't quite get it double click. There you go. And when you double click it, you'll see the text editor and you'll see your cursor is blinking right in front of it. So I'm going to act two put a space, a capital X, and put another space, and then pick Close Text Editor up here. If you want, you can drag that over and uh, kind of find a better location for it now that you know how, how large that's going to be. In the ASME standard, they show the 2x two different ways, one with a space between the 2 and the x, and then sometimes they show it just 2x with no space. And so really you can do it either way. I just make sure that I do it consistently on all of my views. All right, at that point, I have all the dimensions that I want to put on this view. I think I've got all my profiles uh, dimensioned over here. So the next thing I want to look at are the dimensions that are going to be in my side view. So with that in mind, I'm going to see if I can drag this sketch over here on top of that view and kind of zoom in and think about what it is that I'm missing over here. Well, one thing that would be a good profile would be the height of, of this part and the height of this part. So I can see those are 0.75 and then it's point se or the, the width of this part which is 0.75. So I'm going to pick on linear. I'm going to pick at this corner, pick at that corner. I'm going to move out at least 0.4 and uh, I don't want my text to be out here so I'm going to drag it to the inside and just pick a point. Now I'm going to zoom back out and at this point I'm going to put my overall height in and instead of going back to linear what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my baseline dimension I'm going to pick on baseline and all I need to do is go to that corner right there and pick and then press escape now what happened is um, when you use the baseline command after you place a linear demand AutoCAD uses the first point of your linear command and just builds a baseline command off of that now I may want to pick on that and drag it out a little bit farther uh, because I want to use the same spacing uh, between my dimensions as I did on my other view, uh, my front view over there. Alright, the other dimension that I'm going to put on this is the overall width and then this .75 here. So always start with the shortest one, place it nearest the part. So I'm going to pick at those points, I'm going to slide up, uh, move out again at least .4 and pick. Then I'm going to pick my baseline again. This time I'm going to come right down here and pick at that corner and press escape. And again I'm going to pick on that and drag it up just a little bit and drag it out. Press escape. And uh, that's all the dimensions I'm going to put onto the right side view. All of those are good profile dimensions. Okay, I'm going to pick on my sketch again and see if I can just drag it up here next to this piece and or to this view. All right, so all I'm missing right now really uh, are my the radii for the corners of this part, the radii for the slots, uh, the distance between the centers of those radii on this slot, and that's what I'm going to place on this view because I think those are the best uh, uh, profile views. All right, so let's let's look at this one over here. What I think I'll do is put my radius on this view for this outside radius right here. So I'm going to select the radius tool. I'm going to pick on that select right here and uh, just place that about right here. Now that's a fairly large radius and what I would like to use is the large radius dimension style for that one and I want to show you how you can do that. If you select that dimension you'll see its grips and then go up and pick on annotate the annotate tab and come right over here to where it says dimensions and you will see the dimension style that that dimension is currently set to which is called ASME small radii. I'm going to pick on the down arrow and I made another style called ASME large radii and look at the difference between these. When I'm on small radii the arrow points to the outside on this side but when I switch to large radii the arrow comes from the inside so I'm going to actually put this on the large radii and press escape. Now, small radii is still my current style. I didn't change my style, so anything else that I do is going to stay with the small radii. All right, the other dimension that I want to place on this is going to be a linear dimension, and I'm going to go from this endpoint and or and to this endpoint. Sometimes when you do that, it's going to find a quadrant. I'm going to move out into this direction, 
move at least 0.4 tenths away from, from the edge of my part and pick. And there's the distance there. And the last dimension that I need to place on this is another radius dimension pointing to this radius here. And I'm going to move out. Actually, I could even put it in here. That way I won't have to move my sketch right away. I'm just going to put that right there. All right, now, if you look on the sketch, you're going to see that the sketch says that that is 2 times r.375. So if you think about that, the 2, this is one of those radii. This is the other radius. And it's only going to two decimal places of precision. So I'm going to pick on that one time, right-click my mouse, go to precision, click 3 for my precision. I'm going to double click on this. My cursor is blinking right in front of the R. I'm going to type 2 space capital X space and pick. And so there I have that. And I believe at this point if I went through and just put a check mark on every one of my dimensions that I would have all of my dimensions in here. The only thing that I'm lacking right now is the material note. And so I'm going to show you where I like to put the, the material notes. Here's my title block. And uh, what I like to do, imagine that I had a line coming out from this corner that went straight across. I like to put my notes below where that line would be. And so really I'm just putting them to the left of my title block. I'm trying to avoid putting any views or anything in there. And uh, you know, I just realized I'm, leave, I'm missing one more dimension, and that's my overall width. So let me just put that in here real quick. I'm going to go do a, a linear dimension, and I'm going to snap to this corner of the front view, and then snap to this corner of the front view, and just bring that up here. And again, I want to have equal spacing between here and here and here. So I'm going to have to bring that guy down just a little bit. I kind of uh, get that spacing in there. The other thing sometimes you need to do is uh, sort of stagger your dimensions so that they're not all piled up on top of each other like this over here. So I would just slide those down the, the line, maybe put that over there if you want to. Uh, the goal here in dimensioning is always clarity. You want, you want everything to look clear and be easy to read. Now this is a little, a little crowded over here, so one thing I could do is slide this up. And if I wanted, I could come over here and just park on that endpoint and acquire that point. And you'll see the dash line come over here and pick. And as long as I'm lining stuff up, uh, I think it looks pretty good. And so I'm going to pick on this, maybe uh, move up a little bit into that space that I just created right in there. Pick right there. Press Escape. So again, let's get back to those notes. Like I said, I like to put my notes over here on the left-hand side. Uh, one of the things I like to do is preface the notes by saying notes unless otherwise specified. And then I always number the notes. In this case, I've got one interpret dimensions per ASMEY 14.5-2009. Uh, note number two says material. And then in this case, it's mild steel. And uh, one of the things the ASME um, drafting standard suggests is that you include this note here saying that uh, any dimensions or symbols or tolerance should, tolerances should be interpreted per this note. So sometimes I make this note longer and, and I add, add more to it and it says interpret dimensions, tolerances, and symbols per ASMEY 14.5-2009. At that point, I'm just going to come up here and lead out my sketch so that you can see the, the three views fully dimensioned.